Hello everyone and good evening. Today we're going to make a simple DNS DHCP lab using Packet Tracer. This is the 6.02 uh, Packet Tracer for students. So we have our basic requirements here. Uh, we're going to use the addressing scheme of 10.50.1.1 slash 24. So that's a, uh, a class C and that gives us a mask of course of 255, 255, 255.0. We have our default gateway and we have our server IP address. We're going to set up DHCP on an Aggie server and we're going to restrict the dynamic addressing range from .25 to .99 giving us 74 available. Then we're going to create a class A record and call that uh, nmsu.edu. We're going to modify our page to show that it's working. And finally, we're going to ensure that all functionality and communication is there. Last, uh, we need to make sure we use three PCs, one switch, and one server. So let's go ahead and get started. Let's run down here and grab three generic. Let's head over to switches. We're just going to grab a 2950T and let's get ourselves a server. All right. Now, if you're curious about, especially with switches and routers, sometimes uh, knowing which one um, has which ports can be confusing. So you can just double click and it will bring up under the physical tab a physical representation of your server. And in this case, there's 24 fast Ethernet ports right here. Plenty for what we're working on. All right, so let's go ahead and set this up. I'm just working to it from the bottom. Uh, this is your choice unless specifically directed. And then from the switch to the server, though, I'll start at the beginning. Okay, great. So we have three PCs, one switch, and one server. And the first thing we need to do is configure DHCP on the Aggie server. So if we come over to config, first we can rename this. We'll call that Aggie server. And we can go ahead and start to configure the gateway in the DNS. So the gateway, which is here, 10.50.1.1, and the DNS server is this server, which is the 1.101. Great. Now we need to go over to the port here, fast ethernet, make sure that it's turned on and we need to go ahead and complete the IP address which is 1.101 and the subnet mask is a 255.255.255.0. .255. Great. Now let's head over to services. Notice that HTTP and HTTPS is on. We'll be using that later on. Right now though we want the DHCP I want to go ahead and turn that to on. Our default gateway, once again, our DNS server. Now notice this start IP address. This is where do we, the bottom end of the range that we want to start passing out dynamic host IP address. And in this case, we want 10.50.1.25. Okay, our mask stays the same. And the maximum number of users, 74. So let's go ahead and save that. Make sure that we're turned on. All right, looks good. Next thing we want to do is let's go to PC1, or in this case, PC3. And let's come over here to, oops, to desktop. Go to IP configuration. And notice its default is static, but we want it to be dynamic. So we're going to click right here. We'll give it a second. And notice that the DHCP request was successful. Here's our IP address. It started at the 1.25 that we specified. There's the mask the default gateway, and the DNS server. 
So let's go ahead and, and activate that on all three of our machines real quick. Confirming that DHCP was, uh, request was successful. Again, notice the dot .26. And one more time. This should be a dot .27. Excellent. And we should, if we do the ping, and we ping from one device to the other, we do have communication here. Right. Notice we were successful in all three attempts. Okay. Now we need to uh, let's make sure we did it. Okay. Uh, we restricted the range. Uh, we set up DHCP. Now we need to do the DNS. So we can go back to the server, go back to our services, and this time we want DNS. We want to turn the DNS server on. And in that process, we want to ensure that our name here, we're going to call it nmsu.edu. We'll leave this as a type A record. And our address is our server here, 10.50.1.101. Let's go ahead and add that. Notice it shows up in our records. And the next thing we want to do is modify our default landing page, the index.html, to include your course number, your name, and the current semester. We do that by going to HTTP. And notice we have these defaults right here. So we'll come to Index. We will uh, click on Edit. And let's just remove this section right here and let's put welcome to ICT 477 my uh, let's go ahead and say spring 27 semester and let's put our name on here Zach Smith excellent so let's go ahead and save that do we want to overwrite? Yes, we do. This is, works like a standard, uh, ver although very minimal, FTP uh, client. So now we can see if we did it right. We will go to our computer. We'll go to the HTTP web browser. And let's type in HTTP slash, colon slash slash nmsu.edu. Notice. Welcome to ICT 477, Spring 2017, and your name. Let's go ahead and make sure that the HTTPS is also working. Excellent. And of course, to test that, uh, we can close it and open up if you want to double check. And it looks good. All right, great. We have, uh, let's see, we've used this address scheme. We've set that up, uh, providing our range and DHCP on our IP addresses. We have the Aggie Server Class A for NMSU. We've modified the index page to include course number, your name, and the current semester. And finally, we have used the ping tool, the packet PDU tool, to ping across the network demonstrating connectivity and by opening the browser we'll try a different machine we have demonstrated that we are in fact receiving the DNS or the domain name system that takes the nmsu.edu that we put in and routes that to our DNS server. Well, thank you for watching. If you like this video, go ahead and subscribe. And thank you for your time. Have a good day and happy coding.